My name is Carrie Marshall. Uh, I'm an author about creativity in care and working with lots of people. My um, job title is that I'm the founding director of Creativity in Care, which is a, an enterprise that works with people all ages, but particularly older people. I was I was uh, I was intrigued by what I was reading about your bio. Um, you use uh, puppetry, right? Correct. You use puppets to uh, in your education, yeah. right? Um, and you also wrote a book, yes, which is exciting. I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll be I'm honest. I've two books. Two books. Wow, that's great. Uh, I, I'm I, on my third. <laughs> <laughs> so you you going on? So uh, can you explain to us about that 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 book, uh, particularly that that is the puppet uh, for care? I think it is the uh, if I'm not mistaken here. So if you want to explain a little bit more about that book, if you can. Okay. So uh, Puppetry in Dementia Care is the name of a book published by Jessica Kingsley Publishers. And it's based on lots of years of my work, working with people living with dementia, using puppetry. And it's to show that how different art forms, but puppetry in particular, can support people in terms of their identity, uh, self-expression, their creativity and imagination, and that it doesn't matter what disability somebody has, it doesn't matter what the diagnosis is, people can still connect through very many arts, but puppetry as well. And how's, how, how's the, how do they, because uh, this is exciting, I would like to see how is it, I mean, do they, what's the expression when you come out and, and, and you do, or you start with your puppets. So, what is what the uh, the expressions? How is that? Oh, okay. So we do this in in two ways. In the early days, we used to bring puppets into people, and we would have to be really careful uh, to keep a distance in case somebody was frightened. And then we would um, notice that people started to connect, look look at the puppets in ways that they weren't engaging with anything else. And so they started to show interest. Um, but the way we use puppets now is that people we support people to make puppets of themselves. So the puppets might be of themselves now, uh, or it, they could be of a time when they remember the most. So we have lots of people who make puppets of themselves from the past, and they tell their stories through the puppets. Um, there's something about puppetry that's very mindful. There's a lot of breathing into the puppet. And so it's a very mindful thing to do. So it's a very relaxing thing to do for people. But also we found that people can speak through their puppet when they haven't spoken for maybe two or three years themselves. But they will use their voice for a puppet. Have you documented some of that? Because that's that's interesting. So they they won't not remember, but once they get into the puppet, they 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 tend to talk more, right? That's and engage more. Yeah. Oh my God, that's it. That's yeah. exciting. That's I heard about music. Yeah. I heard about music bringing uh bringing their sense back, but a puppet I never heard that before, which is interesting. Yeah. Wow, that's that's <laughs> really that's. I would love to see if you can uh, document if you have a documented because I see you had a couple of videos of when you yeah. or they're creating and stuff but that would be something yeah. pretty good so no wonder you're writing books about constantly <laughs> my background my background is in health and social care so i started off in nursing and managing care home and and then i lectured in health and social care i was always really interested in the creative way of connecting with people because i saw how the creative elements made people feel good and also helped people to express themselves. And so when I was lecturing, I was always lecturing about finding the creative way to connect. It didn't matter if it was music, singing, art, poetry, puppetry. It didn't matter as long as it it connected. And then uh, gradually I just felt I wanted to go back to doing it myself. And so... Um, so now I, I do it myself and teach it as well. And that's, that's, yeah. That's amazing. My yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> that's... It's the power of art because um, 
there's so many ways in which with, with particularly with dementia um, where the cognitive function of the brain is you know is damaged in some way so people might not be able to speak as well but their intelligence is still there it's just their way of communicating needs to change or we need to change our way to communicate better for many many years nearly 30 years I was talking about this creative way of connecting and many people didn't think it was possible because everybody was focused on the sadness and the the loss and the devastation, which is true for many families who feel that. But we know from all these years that there's a lot of joyfulness and ways to connect that can support people in their identity or to change their identity. Some people don't want to, to be who they were in the past. Some people want something different now. And it's really interesting how art can support that in so many ways. So people feel good and have a good life. That is, it's true. It's, uh, I saw uh, this, uh, it was a little kind of, I could say micro documentary about three minutes of uh, a gentleman that he didn't remember about anything. He had dementia, right? So his family member took him to, to, to take classes for art. And he kept on drawing the same type of a uh, of figure, and he's just trying to, you know, he he was communicating through the art with his family member, but they couldn't understand it. But until the yeah. son came in and the son figured out that what he was talking about is a boat that he had when he was a child. So he yeah. figured because he kept on seeing those those photos and, and this, you know, the son was like, "What is this? What he's trying to say?" And it's just yeah. that story that he was trying. There was something specifically that triggered his memory but, and that he remembered. Yeah. So that that was something exciting, and it's just it's like, oh my god, you know. Like I said, through this research, I learned so many stuff about this. Yeah. So, so can you can you share um, how does your artistic activity benefits the elderly, especially the seniors with mental illnesses such as dementia? I know you you I know you mentioned about uh, you use the creativity, but how how is that you know how can that help them through through that illness? When we use creative ways of working with people with dementia, they they are, you can see the self-esteem rising because people feel more valued and there's a respect and there's a sense of possibility that was missing before. And that does wonders for people. So people become more alert. People um, speak when they haven't spoken before or they uh, give more eye contact. There are people that we work with sometimes who haven't been able to lift their head off the pillow. You know, they're, they're, they've got more advanced symptoms of dementia, so they're coming towards the end of their life. Um, and even there, there's still ways to connect and have fun. And so people's lives, it's just to increase people's quality of life so that it's not all loss and doom and gloom. It's, you know, people can live well, even with dementia. Oh, yes. Yes, I, it's... I, I saw when I went back to the retirement home uh, last week, and I, I took part of that activity when they were doing uh, when they were painting, and I saw uh, not they didn't have completely two dimension, but you can tell they were going into it because they kept forgetting how to spell their name, how to, yeah. uh, and and it's just I saw as I took picture I saw just their their faces how they were engaged, and doing yeah. the lines. And the instructor there told me that when they first started there, they couldn't even pick up the brush. That's you know, right. They didn't know what to do with it. And then so right. she started, you know, and what she does is that she gives them a reference. So she will do something early and then she said, this is what right. we're going to make today. You know, and, yeah. and it's just, it was just amazing seeing them going and, and, you know, for me, it's like, okay, they're painting, but in reality, you got to put into your mind that, these are people that they lo they lost their 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 way the sense of thinking and the sense of of, of realizing about things you know so the way that they that she they that the uh the early just painted and and it's something you know they were happy say oh I forgot yeah. to put birds in here so she put birds into <laughs> it you know so that's yes. something you know I, I really appreciate what you do with with, with, with your your creator and your puppetry and everything that you do in your organization yourself that's that's 
that's a, start, that's a very important because it's if you don't if, if you imagine yourself without creativity i mean everybody would meant to be creative right since, <laughs> yeah. since day one I think it's a, yeah it feels like a, a life force in all of us and i think sometimes you know we uh, many people say they're not creative but i believe everybody is you don't you, you, don't, know, you, don't, you don't have to be a, a picasso to to be uh to be creative no. you just put something in paper you just just pretty much just brushing anything or listening to music or dancing, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. writing, poetry, all that is something that, that I come to learn that it, it is really good. And that's something that I'm trying to bring into, into my kids. So, so they can, they can get into it, get used to it because. And yeah. And to remember that Picasso took many, many years to paint like Picasso. Uh, he didn't just do it overnight. <laughs> that took years. So we met a man who, he he wasn't really he wasn't really engaging with anybody at all. He was quite angry. He had had a big stroke, so he had vascular dementia, and nobody really knew how to work with him. So we said we'd like to try. So sometimes we just go and we just sit and breathe with somebody. We use a model of connection that I developed, and that's it includes mindfulness first. And so we just sat and breathed with the man. A little bit and then gradually over time just built the relationship just based on two minutes a week right. just very tiny very t and then um he ended up being the, one of the most prolific makers we've ever worked with he just kept making things so he made a puppet of himself from when he was a fisherman and he spoke through that puppet and he told every he was so funny and he told everybody through the puppet that he had won all these gold and silver medals for all these things that they <laughs> and um and so he became more proud and people really saw him as a different man they saw him as this very funny man and and so they treated him differently wow. and he became more different and more sociable and it was just really beautiful just to watch the progression but you know yeah <laughs> yeah. Which is, I'm still finding it interesting. I'm still trying because with a puppet, it's it's, it's incredible, right? How they, with a puppet, they 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 tend to block themselves but portray themselves through the puppets. Yeah, That's and it's I think it's something it's something about being one step removed. Um, mm -hmm. It's safer to speak through a puppet than it is to say it directly sometimes to somebody, and also. I think there's something about the human race that we're hardwired to feel the empathy with a puppet mm -hmm. and to connect with a puppet. Some people are scared, but not many. In your opinion, what do you believe about research uh, that had been found? The seniors engage in any, and seniors that engage in any art activity like painting, drawing, music, writing, poetry, etc., can make a huge difference in their life and can also be helpful for healthy aging. Um, there's a there's a research about in the Washington Post here in the university uh, uh -huh. that that uh, it was created that they they separated elderly that had um, no art they weren't related to art at all they just did the normally stuff you know and then they created this they they separated this other group they were engaging art and then they found out that the one engaging art uh, they they came up with all these benefit health benefits. So what what what's yeah. your opinion about that? Um, yeah, there's lots there's lots of research, but some of it isn't always um, validated. So even though we might believe it, we uh, other other researchers might not see that it's validated. Um, but there's research there's researchers going back to there's um, Gene Cohen and he did aging studies, and he was showing that our imagination and our creativity remains intact even if our memory disappears or our um or our words change and uh, bruce miller he also showed with uh, alzheimer's disease that creativity remained and he said that people needed to be able to uh, communicate more visually as words or cognition starts to change, they need more visual ways to communicate. Now, in yeah. general, not only for the elderly, what what you um what you uh, opinion about art itself, or for you know how healthy it is towards moving to 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 aging and to prevent for having 
mental illnesses like dementia. Um, what do you think about art as as a as a great benefit for ourselves, for us that we're not in that stage of of, of dementia or anything like that? So it's important for us to stay engaged or, or in yes. the art. <laughs> yes, I think I think art is it's really important for all of us. Uh, any form of art, something that inspires us, um, just something to try. Any any form of art, I think, is really important for every single person on this earth. <laughs> and I think we are naturally disposed, you know, uh, sorry, I think that we are naturally wanting to express ourselves in different creative forms. And sometimes we just need permission to do that. So I would say, yeah, everybody, everybody to do that because it benefits us. It reduces our own stress. We also know that it's important to walk our talk. So, you know, if we're not doing the art, then why would we be teaching it? We we need to do it ourselves. Yeah. I, I completely agree with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. What is your, your mission and your goal uh, using your puppetry and other creative programs for dementia care? What is your, your, your mission and your goals? So at Creativity and Care, our goal is to support people to feel included and joyful, whether that's in care or community settings, so that people's quality of life improves. And we do that through a whole range of creative ways. And the main point about all of that is so that people realize how amazing they are. Because so often people with some form of disability, whether it's dementia or any other form, can start to feel that they're not as valuable as other people. And other people sometimes don't treat them as well. But we can show that through a creative process, uh, we can show people are really amazing, regardless of anything. 